Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 5, Lesson 5, Ship Weapon Systems. In this course, we're going to discuss the weapon hierarchy for our project. We're going to demonstrate creating a weapon base class, then we'll demonstrate creating a projectile class, then we'll demonstrate creating a fire weapon interface, and finally, we'll pull it all together to demonstrate the ship weapon systems. One thing that we really want to consider is that whatever weapon system we create for our project is scalable. So as the game becomes more and more complex, we have the ability to implement additional functionality without having to go back and rewrite a bunch of code. Two things we want to look into the future for is that we want our ship to be able to have multiple weapons and we want to enable the player to choose a starting weapon. So here's a diagram for how I'm going to be setting up our weapon system. We'll start with the player camera. If you remember, we've already created an input event called fire main weapon. And that input event has a pressed and released execution. I want to have the pressed execution send a command to the player ship to start firing. And this will be a function on the player ship. On the player ship, we're going to set up an equipped weapons array. And we'll start this with just one basic weapon. The start firing function will go through the equipped weapons array and call fire weapon as an interface. This fire weapon interface will call a spawn projectile event on our weapon class. And then that spawn projectile event on the weapon class will spawn a projectile, which will be its own class. And eventually, this projectile class will have an apply damage function when it comes in contact with an enemy. When a player releases that button, we'll call stop firing on the player's ship. This will call the stop weapon through the same interface. And then if the weapon has an auto fire function, which most of our weapons will, we'll clear timer. And this may be a lot to absorb all at once, so let's go through it step by step. We'll start by creating our ship weapon class. So here I am back in my project, and in my blueprints folder, I'll create a new blueprint, and this will be an actor. And we're going to call this BP Weapon Base. And for now, let's just create two things. We're going to add a static mesh, and we'll call this Mesh. And then let's add an arrow, and we'll call this muzzle. For our static mesh, let's just create a cube for now. I want this to be a little bit longer, more like a ship weapon would be. So let's scale it on the Y to 0.2 and the Z to 0.2. So we just have this long box. And our muzzle, let's move it so the tip of this arrow is right where the edge of our weapon would be. And if you want, you can just put a new material on this. All right, so our weapon base is set up. We have a mesh, which for now is just this box as a placeholder. And then we have our muzzle, which is an arrow. And this will eventually allow us to fire a projectile from this point going in this direction. Next, let's set up our projectile class. So again, here, I'm going to right click and create a new blueprint and this will be an actor, and I'm gonna call this BP projectile base. And let's go in here. So let's add a collider to this. And if we type in static mesh, and then we type pyramid, we can get this shape tri pyramid. Now, if you remember from geometry, a tetrahedron is the most basic 3D shape. So this will have the least geometry that we need for our collider. And this will help because once we have multiple weapons firing, there's gonna be hundreds of these on the screen and we wanna make sure that we're allowing our performance to stay as high as possible. The one thing I do wanna do though is rotate this so that the point of the pyramid is facing forward. And I'm just gonna change the name of this to collider and we want to keep the geometry of this to use as a collider, and eventually we'll hide this geometry, but we'll keep the collider active. And the next thing I want to do is create my fire weapon interface. So back here in my blueprints folder, I'm going to go to blueprints, blueprint interface, I'm going to call this BPI fire weapon. 
And this is going to have two functions, start firing and stop firing. And here in my weapon base, we want to add that interface. So let's go to class settings and add our fire weapon to implemented interfaces. And one more thing I want to do to this projectile is I want to add a component. And if I type projectile, there's a projectile movement component. And this will allow us to set up the physics of our projectile very easily in one component. And if you see, there's all kinds of variables that we can use to affect this projectile. One thing I know that I'm gonna to wanna to do is set up an initial speed and max speed and turn off the gravity. Let's try 500 for testing. So now that our projectile is set up and our weapon base is set up, and we've set up our weapon interface, let's demonstrate pulling it all together to create a weapon system. And if we go back to this diagram that I created, we can look at this and we can take any point in this and just start building it all together. We have all the pieces, we just need to implement the functionality. So you can start from the left at player camera and start implementing it to the right. Or you could start at the right and move backwards to the left. I'm gonna go right to left because this way makes a little bit more sense to me. However, you can do it any way you want. If you wanna to try to pull this all together yourself, you can pause the video now and use this as a challenge, or you can follow along with me. So I'm gonna start at my weapon base, and I'm gonna implement this start firing function. And I wanna spawn an actor from a class, and this class is going to be projectile. And we need one more input, and that is the transform. So where do we want this projectile to spawn from? We can use the muzzle and say, get world transform and plug that in. Now, eventually we wanna be able to set up different weapon types and we want each weapon type to be able to spawn its own projectile type. So we can drag off this class and say, promote to variable and we'll call this projectile class. Now we need to call this interface event from our player ship. So I'm gonna create a new function and it's gonna be called start firing weapons. Eventually we want this to fire all the weapons, but for now it's just gonna fire the one that we have. And we need to have the weapons physically on the ship. So on our static mesh, I'm gonna add two new components and it's gonna be an arrow. And I'll call this left weapon array. Now, if we go to our top view, I wanna move this to where I want the weapon to spawn. And I think that looks good. Now I'm gonna duplicate this and call it right weapon array. And I want it the exact same location, but on the other side. So I'll just add a negative to location. Now I have my left and right weapon array on my ship. And we wanna spawn a weapon onto each of these locations when we start the game. So I'm gonna create a new function called spawn weapons. And I just wanna make sure that I call that right on begin play. And I wanna spawn an actor from class. And this is going to be our weapon base. And for the transform, let's do the left weapon array, get world transform, and plug that in. And we also want to do the same thing for our right weapon array. Now we'll need to call the fire weapon interface from our start firing weapons, but we need to have a reference to that in order to do it. So here in our spawn weapons, after we spawn the actor, let's promote this to a variable and I'm gonna call this active weapons. And I wanna set it as an array. And instead, I wanna add this weapon to my active weapons array. And I'll do the same thing for the right one. So now when we spawn our weapons, we'll create one on the left weapon array 
add it to the active weapons array, and then we'll create one on the white weapons array and add it to the active weapons array. Now, this active weapons array will have two indexes, one for each weapon. Now, in our start firing weapons, we can get a reference to this, and because it's BP weapon base, we can do for each and call start firing. And we'll see here our BPI fire weapon will send a message to that. Now in our player camera, when we press the fire weapon button, we want it to call start firing weapons. So we can get a reference to our player ship and just call function start firing weapons. And for now, we'll just test this out. We'll see though, there's some bugs. First of all, we left our weapons behind and we can spawn the projectiles, but then our player's ship becomes trapped in them. So let's fix these one at a time. First, let's create it so that the weapons will follow our ship. In the spawn weapons, let's give ourselves a little bit more space after we spawn that weapon. And we can do attach to component and we can create it as a parent to our left weapon array. And for these settings, let's just change how we handle the attachment. For location, let's say keep world. For rotation, say snap to target and scale snap to target. And let's just do the same thing for the right. Now the weapons are following us, but we have a new problem. We can no longer move the ship. This is because our mesh has our collision active. So let's just disable collision. And the next bug is that we can't really collide with these projectiles. So in our projectile, let's go to our collider and instead of block all, let's choose overlap all. Now we can continue to fire our weapon and we can move through them freely. Now the next thing is that I don't want to have to continually fire this weapon. I want it to be able to where I hold down the mouse button and it will continue to fire and then when I release it will stop firing. And we'll handle this in the weapon base class because we want each weapon to be able to handle its own firing behavior. So let's select all of this and we'll collapse it to a function and we'll call this function spawn projectile. And now whenever we press the fire weapon button, we'll spawn a projectile. And then we want to set timer by function name and call spawn projectile. And for the timer, we want to create a function that will calculate based upon a fire rate. So let's create a new variable called fire rate. And this will be a float. And let's start with something like five for five rounds per second. We'll get a reference to that. Now, if we plug this in here, we'll fire one round every five seconds. What we want to do is instead have this be rounds per second. So we can type divide and drag this into the bottom pin. And then for the top pin, we'll put one. Now we'll divide a second by the number of rounds per that second and this will be the timer. Let's collapse this to a function and call this get fire rate. And this will be a pure function. And we want to set this as looping. And now, as long as I'm holding down the mouse button, we'll continue to fire. But when I release, nothing happens. So let's implement our stop firing event and we'll just call clear timer by function name and the function name is going to be spawn projectile. Now in our player ship, we need another new function called stop firing weapons. And this will take our active weapons array. We'll do a for each loop. And we'll call stop firing on our BPI fire weapon. And the last thing we need to do is on our camera controller, call stop firing weapons. 
Now when we hold down the button, we'll continue to fire projectiles, and when we release, we'll stop firing projectiles. So now that everything is working, let's review. And this time, we'll go from left to right, the opposite of the way we implemented it. We have this fire main weapon input action, and this is set up to my left mouse button. When I press left mouse button, I'll call start firing weapons on my player ship. Start firing weapons gets our active weapons array and calls start firing on our BPI fire weapon. This goes through any weapons that we have equipped and calls this interface. And here on our weapon base, we have our start firing event. This calls spawn projectile, which takes our projectile class, which we set up as a variable so we can change it based upon each weapon type. It takes a reference from the muzzle and gets the world transform and then spawns one of those projectiles. And we have it set up so that this is on a looping timer where we get our fire rate, which takes one second divided by the number of rounds we want to fire in that second. When we release the trigger, we'll call stop firing weapons on our player ship. This will take the same active weapons array and call stop firing on our BPI fire weapon. And here we just have that set up to clear the timer. So now you could take a few minutes if you want to clean things up a little bit. For me, I think the collider is a little bit too big, so I'm going to reduce the size to 0.5 on each axis. And I'm also going to go to the projectile movement and speed it up a little bit. I'm going to try 1500. And that's looking pretty good. But I don't want to continue to use this tetrahedron static mesh as our projectile. I want to add a little bit of flair to my project. And for this, we're going to be using the Niagara Particle System. And we'll be using this throughout our course to set up a lot of special effects. And we'll start learning about Niagara in the next lesson.